Hi everyone, Co here with another thoughts video, this time on Wall World. Wall World is a game that is heavily inspired by a game called Dome Keeper. However, it basically takes what's really fun about Dome Keeper and makes everything pretty much better. It is a game where it is a two part gameplay loop. You are either defending your spider mech or mining and getting resources to upgrade it. It is a game of discovery. It is a game of a plethora of upgrades and it is a great example of a roguelite done properly. Now, what I mean by that is that a lot of times in roguelites, if the gameplay loop isn't quite fun enough, you'll find yourself kind of dreading dying and having to start over. You'll get to the end of a life or you'll lose to a boss and you'll go, oh, like that, <sighs> we gotta do it again. But this game is a great example where the meta upgrades are so tangibly, tangibly awesome and the upgrade path is so kind of well-designed that every time you die in Wall World, the first thing you think is, oh, I can't wait to get some upgrades and do it again. And I felt that way all the way to the very last life where I beat the game. And that was an experience that took me looking at my Steam list here. I think I had to leave it on at one point, but um, it says here, yeah, it says here 23 hours. I think it was more like a little around 10 hours, uh, 10, 10 plus hours, but it was a phenomenal experience beginning to end. And here's the big thing. This game is $5 and for $5, it is a super, super easy recommend for me. Uh, the graphics are fun and light. The music is fun. The, the game is, the gameplay is great. The upgrade paths are awesome. And it's uh, for, again, no, no brainer for five bucks. Uh, definitely check it out. Definitely pick it up. And, uh, it's a really great roguelite indie game. Uh, one thing I do want to say is kind of to wrap up this video. There was a whole lot of discussion during this game that it was a rip off of Dome Keeper. And I just kind of wanted to sum up my thoughts on that real quick. Game design and video games are basically a giant ladder of different companies and, and gameplay developers iterating off each other. The differences between Dome Keeper and Wall World are a perfect example of how that is done properly. There's no question that Wall World is inspired from Dome Keeper. It's kind of like how you could call Bloodborne a Souls-like, you know? It's, it's, there's no question that it took a lot of influence from it. But the stuff that it adds to it, the ability to move around, the random story elements, the tangibly awesome upgrade loop, the stuff that it adds in gives it so much of its own flavor that it's almost like Dome Keeper 2. And in a situation like that, it's just great. It's just, it, everything works and it works out to the benefit of us, the player, because we get more games that are more fun, that are by no means the same. I mean, you, you gotta remember, we live in a world where there are literally mobile companies that will find a successful game and then make a copy paste of that game. That's a ripoff. That's what that term is, is for. It's for people that are literally just trying to piggyback off others. But in a case like Wall World, this is a huge step forward for the dome-like genre. And it is, uh, it is definitely a great example of iteration done properly. Anyway, hope this thoughts video helps you in your own. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you guys at the channel, twitch.tv slash co-carnage. Thank you all for watching. And as always, appreciate your time.